And good morning, listeners. This is Almas Market Mornings with your daily dose of global financial update with Shikhar Gar. The folks, we've had the trade data for India released yesterday, and it was a deficit of around fifteen billion dollars. But what's more interesting is the net of merchandise and the services trade being almost neutral, sitting at a deficit of one point three eight billion dollars. Any capital flows higher than that would mean a surplus would flow for the month of April. A good economic performance, huh? Not really, with the both exports and imports declining. But what's more interesting is the globe globally, Japan's uh, topics index is set to trade at its highest level in the uh, last three decades, while the commodities continue to decline over the concerns of the global uh, growth. Nigel, what do you think of these developments apart from the debt ceiling uh, narratives which are ongoing over the financial markets? Good morning, uh, Shikhar. I think we had some significant numbers uh, that's released of our macros. And uh, first of all, the trade deficit number, which has uh, fallen by almost 5 billion from March to April, significant fall in exports and, and more significant fall in import. And on the face of it, it's a you know, it looks like you know, our external macros have improved and it's good for the economy, but not really so because uh, when the imports are falling. Uh, at such big measure, uh, like 9.2 billion uh, for one month, it means uh, there's a substantial decrease in the demand. And when the exports are also falling, which is by about 3.72 billion from March to April, it means that the global demand is coming down. Now, both actually mean that you are going to be producing less and they are going to, uh, you know, have more or sorry, less employment. So that's not a good news uh, from the economic point of view. And if you have export rising and import steady, and if the deficit comes down because of that, that is the ideal scenario that you would have. This is almost similar to uh, Chinese data that we had the last week, where the uh, trade balance or the surplus went up substantially, but with a big fall in import. So that's the same thing. However, for the record, this is the lowest trade deficit that we had since October uh, 2021 uh, and compared to the peak of 30 billion that we had in July 22 the deficit is now uh, actually halved so uh, it means our current account deficit to GDP ratio would be as low as 1.2 percent versus 2.5 percent for the full year FY24 that was uh, estimated now uh, this also means uh, you know some relief for the rupee perhaps but uh, it all depends on other factors. If, uh, uh, you know, uh, other factors do add up to our growth, then uh, I think we may not have so much of a concern. But uh, uh, if, as it is, these numbers are cannot be taken as, you know, uh, uh, a good news from the perspective of just a fall in the uh, deficit. Also, we had a deflationary number in WPI. Uh, which came at uh, minus 0.92 compared to rise of 1.34% in March. And it was 15.38% in April last year. And just for a perspective, it is, uh, no, it, it, it has slumped to this level from a high of 16.63% in May last year. So again, the contribution came from lower food, uh, food inflation, uh, which came down from uh, uh, 5.48 to 3.54 percent, but a decline in the rate of inflation in April primarily contributed by fall in basic metals, food products, uh, textiles, and non-food articles, chemicals, uh, like uh, across the uh, industries. And this is again a worrisome factor because it's a factory gate prices uh, of goods falling means there is less incentive to produce. So effectively, you will have a hit to your industrial production data. So both the numbers actually are not such a good news uh, for the growth picture of the economy. Although from a rupee perspective, this may be, uh, you know, somewhat of a relief because the demand for dollars may be coming down and you may have uh, the deficit being, the low deficit being easily financed by the modest flows that we are uh, seeing uh, right now. So for rupee, it is a steady scenario, uh, but from a growth perspective point of view, which uh, the investors would be looking at, it may not be uh, such a good news after all. Uh, and, and of course, uh, speaking of rupee itself, yesterday we did uh, see it break uh, important resistance at uh, 82.25 and went as high as uh, 82.36. Uh, but 
maybe we'll have slightly lower open today, but uh, uh, once again, unless we go below 80 to 20, uh, journey towards 80 to 50 is uh, quite possible. Uh, on the global side, uh, we had uh, the some somewhat uh, not so uh, frontline data, uh, but we did have the Empire State Manufacturing Index, which actually uh, came as, you know, fell 10 times. Uh, you know, from the previous month, uh, meaning it, it it actually fell 42.6 points to record uh, minus 31.8. And this is the uh, lowest reading that we are seeing from 2008 onwards. But again, economists are not giving it uh, so much of uh, uh, importance because uh, uh, it is a very volatile number, uh, but definitely it should be read along with uh, other numbers like industrial production data today that will be coming out. Uh, to assess uh, where the economy is actually headed. In fact, we have uh, not only industrial production data, but also retail sales data uh, today from the US, uh, which will be uh, closely looked at uh, by the uh, markets. Uh, despite uh, this uh, not so encouraging data on the manufacturing, yields were uh, mostly higher. Uh, I think, uh, again, yields are being influenced by the jitters ahead of uh, the Fed rather the U.S. government's debt ceiling talks, where uh, a key uh, meeting is going to be held today uh, between Biden and the congressional leaders. And, uh, uh, you know, there are some mixed reports about the meeting that is uh, uh, scheduled, uh, some vague reports that, you know, might be there is some given by the government on some of the expenditures, but uh, uh, actually, Mr. McCarthy has been saying that uh, nobody should assume that the deal is being uh, closed this week, and uh, he he actually uh, keeps uh, saying that uh, the deal is far, far off. And uh, uh, meantime, Janet Allen continues to say that you know uh, there will be no uh, possibility of U.S. government meeting its bill after bills after uh, June first. So these keeps uh, these things keep uh, the uh, bond market on the uh, on their toes. Uh, at the same time, we also had uh, the stock market, which was uh, uh, reacting differently because uh, we had the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq both uh, rising yesterday. And uh, this was once again down to uh, corporate news. Uh, uh, so not so much uh, from the economic uh, news uh, point of view. Uh, as far as the yields are concerned, we had warning from uh, Bostic, which said that markets are pricing in uh, rate cuts by uh, next January, but uh, his baseline case is that we won't really be thinking of cutting until well into 2024. And uh, Kashkari also warned that inflation is much too high and there is a long way to go before reaches before Fed reaches his uh, inflation target. So uh, these are uh, not so comforting for uh, bond bulls. So we 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 had a two-year closing above. Uh, 4% yesterday and the 10 year closing at 3.5%. Uh, but at the same time, some, you know, uh, reports saying that um, March, we had a uh, record amount of uh, foreign buying of uh, US uh, uh, treasuries. And uh, that is actually something which may be keeping the dollar bid because uh, we might be uh, seeing foreigners demand for dollars once again emerging. So, uh, coupled with the fact that dollar has been oversold for quite some time, we are seeing the dollar uh, perhaps uh, well supported uh, because of these factors. However, uh, we will be watching the development on the U.S. debt ceiling as well as on the U.S. economic news, which is more uh, important today in terms of retail sales and uh, industrial production. Uh, we also had a news that uh, U.S. would be buying 3 million barrels of oil to replenish their strategic petroleum reserve, and that has actually supported the crude prices. Uh, uh, outside of US, we had Chinese uh, retail uh, retail trade, industrial production, and employment data, all of them coming uh, lower than expected, but uh, perhaps uh, uh, it was uh, uh, taken as positive because uh, compared to last month, it has been higher and not as bad as it was seen in the month of uh, uh, March. We, we will have uh, important data from UK in terms of uh, unemployment, and that will be crucial for the UK economy because uh, the UK economy inflation is running at uh, double digits, and uh, um, go a good employment number uh, will 
push the MPC towards at least another two more rate hikes and the GBP to be uh, very well supported, uh, perhaps against the euro as well as the dollar. So all in all, we are looking forward to a very busy day uh, right from the start uh, of the rupee reaction to the trade data and well into the US time when these data numbers are released. Thank you. Definitely, JK. It is going to be a busy day. And yes, folks, uh, as JK mentioned, there are uh, growing concerns about the kind of growth that we are going to uh, observe over the current uh, few months. But uh, all said and done, as JK mentioned, uh, a lesser uh, import and export number means less productivity, which uh, translates into less demand, less employment and less growth even the uh, wpi numbers were observed as deflationary uh, for the current uh, uh, release of the month of april but uh, this is just domestic even uh, globally as we uh, observed the empire state manufacturing index as jk mentioned fell almost 10 times and rest of the uh, macro uh, updates are to be received today, uh, which uh, the markets are quite keenly focusing on uh, the industrial production as well as the retail sales data for US. Uh, we also have the unemployment number for UK, which will further influence the monetary policy uh, updates from the Bank of England. What's uh, something more interesting is the fact that the insurance or the CDS uh, for the US debt is now higher than that for Mexico, Greece and Brazil. I mean, uh, it's quite hilarious to watch how things go about in uh, financial market, but that's uh, what is being uh, observed and uh, acted upon by the market participants immediately on the backdrop of the debt ceiling discussions. That's it for today, folks. We shall come back again tomorrow with another round of update or the busy update that we are going to see today. Thank you so much for joining.